serving the inner cell and the outer cell. The, uh, the inner cell, uh, because they are nearer to the base station, the base station will transmit with a much lower power. By, transmit with, by transmitting with a much lower power, then uh, what happens is that it will cause less interference to the other users in another cell. Okay. Uh, however, the users in the outer cell, in the yellow zone, because they are further away from the base station, so the base station have to increase the transmission power to such that it can receive a proper signal. By doing that, uh, it transmits with a higher power and it will cause high interference to the other cells. So that's why for each cell, it could have an inner cell, where because for users nearby the base station, it, with, it will have very low power transmission, it will not create interference to another user in another inner cell. However, for users in the outer cell, they will have to use some sort of frequency reduced planning because they will cause interference towards each other. Did I answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, there's another question. I would like to ask you that uh, you have uh, mentioned six types of diversity. Time, uh, diversity, frequency, diversity, spectral diversity, polarization diversity, cooperative diversity, and multi-user diversity. The, uh, my question is that is cooperative diversity is applicable in fixed channel segment and dynamic channel segment? Okay, it's, your question is, is cooperative diversity applicable in cellular communications? Is it? Uh, my question is that we have a, uh, two types of schemes of routing and channels. One is fixed channel uh, assignment and other is dynamic channel assignment. As far as we concerned with the cooperative diversity, is it effective in both uh, assignment of a channels? Okay, well, uh, for cooperative diversity, uh, the, the idea is that other users or other nodes will assist your transmission. Yeah. So uh, the other users could be using different frequencies, but they could be transmitting at different times. Uh, but then uh, the importance is that because the other user, because they see a different channel, because assuming that you are communicating, yeah, but your classmates or your, your, your colleagues uh, next to you um, is helping you by sending the signal, uh, by forwarding the signal, then what happens is that because the other user will see a different channel, so by seeing a different channel, then you will have a different uh, observation of the channel so you could get a better performance. Because as I've mentioned, what if when you are communicating with the base station, what if your channel is very weak? If your channel is very weak, then uh, your, your signal probably can't, can't go through. However, if someone else can help you to forward the signal across, then uh, your signal could uh, carry across to the base station. Yeah. Uh, of course, one major issue, I have to say, one major issue for cooperative diversity is security. And uh, well, what people think about this idea. Because well, if you are communicating, if you are sending, of course you would want others to help you. However, if you are not sending, do you still want others to help? Or do you still want to use your mobile phone to help others? Yeah, because what happens is that well, your phone is on idle, uh, but if this is being implemented, what happens is that even if you're not talking, your phone will be sending signals. So it will consume power from your mobile phone. Uh, does people want, really want to do that? I'm not sure. That's one uh, issue. Another issue is security, because uh, if another user is listening to what you are sending and trying to decode what you are sending, then effectively they know what you are sending. If they know what you're sending, then security becomes a problem. Yeah. Uh, so cooperative diversity is a great thing. Uh, it's still being investigated, uh, don't get me wrong on that, uh, especially for uh, LTE, but probably not in the uplink. It's probably in the downlink. Because in the downlink, they could have different base stations. Because from a base station point of view, there's no issue of security. Uh, but then they could provide extra uh, uh, channels to serve uh, every user. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, Any other questions? One more question. Uh, second, so we have the block diagram of the overall, overall wireless communication system. Yeah. Uh, so my question is that once a particular user, user has received uh, signal on his or her mobile equipment, then what is the purpose of the uh, user separation block on the receiver side? Okay, what's the purpose of user separation block? Uh, the, yeah, okay. Uh, first of all, because the, uh, the, well, when we communicate, yeah, uh, multiple users will communicate at the same time. Yeah, because, for example, yeah, when, well, when you talk on the phone, you, it's not only you using the, book base, uh, using the channel. Multiple users will be accessing the channel at the same time. Uh, so that's why the multiple access is needed in a transmitter. But at the receiver side, we also need this user separation block. Because, for example, if it is FDMA, if every user uses different frequency, then uh, at the receiver, they will need to have a bandpass filter. Yeah? They'll need to have a bandpass filter to separate each user. That's for FDMA, but similarly for TDMA, they will need to look at different time. For CDMA, they will need to be spread it. Uh, because for CDMA, there's a spreading process and a despreading process. The despreading process is effectively the user separation. They have to separate each individual user such that the, uh, the base station can distinguish which signals come from which user. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I think. Thank you so much for such a useful lecture. You're welcome. Do you mind? Thank you for you. What's that question? Yeah, there are things just uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. No? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are there any, any further questions? Okay, well, thanks very much. Okay. Well, thank you for attending. Thank I you hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. If there are any follow up questions that anybody has um, and wants to contact us at the University of Manchester, um, you can contact us at international. It's an email address, international at manchester.ac.uk. Okay, did everybody catch that? No. Thank you so much, Dr. David, uh, for delivering such a useful lecture to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Arms job, no, we're